Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly for pricing. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing the second-generation Vacheron Constantin Overseas Chronograph. The model was made between 2004 and 2015, but the variant you see here with the blue lacquer dial was only available from 2013 to 2015, so this had a relatively short production run. This is considered one of the best second-generation chronos to own. So, it is 42 millimeters in diameter by 12.6 millimeters thick, and because the bracelet pulls straight down out of the lugs, it is only 50.5 millimeters lug-to-lug -lug across the wrist, and has a nicely sloped case flank. Let's zoom out a little bit. Let's open it up, put it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and you can see it wears well. In fact, it's so well-shaped and relatively narrow, given the way the bracelet moves, that you could wear this watch on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference. It's also nicely sloped on its flank and thin enough to fit underneath a dress shirt. So if you want to wear it as a formal watch, it's definitely up for that kind of duty. The bracelet is beautifully made. Now I will say, although the third generation bracelet has more features with its micro adjust and its quick release system, the second generation bracelet feels more substantial and it's more beautifully finished in detail. This was the best qualitative bracelet the company ever produced. You can see it's fixed to the case using screws and bars, which is more secure than spring bars, something you like to see on a big, heavy, expensive, upscale sports watch. And then you can see every single link in the bracelet on both sides is fixed by screws and, as a result, is removable. We also have a half link in there for precise sizing. On the underside, you can see calculated gaps to avoid pinching skin, pulling hair, or trapping wrist heat. And then on the top, we have these fine breaks between satin and polished elements. Take a look particularly at this Maltese cross motif repeating at the center of the bracelet. Look at the sharp inward polished facets of those little Maltese cross flourishes, and you can get a sense of just how well finished this is. Look at the rolled bevel on the flanks of the links, and you can see it continues across the case. We may as well show the clasp real quick. Double deployant, twin trigger release. It's not a sequential close, so you can close either side first. Case flank is polished. You can see that the lugs slope down. Another reason why this watch wears so well on a smaller wrist. The case flank is polished. There's a little bevel that runs across the lug hoods in the case flank. You can see the lug hoods are satin. The case top is satinated. We have a Maltese cross style bezel. You can see it has the little flourish sticking out, and it's polished externally, but internally you can see the recesses are satinated. We have a sharp knurling inspired by the, by the Maltese cross, the symbol of the company, I should mention. On the screw-down chronograph pushers in the crown, you can see there's another one on the crown, because they're all screw-downs, and the watch is robustly constructed. Water resistance is 150 meters. We'll do a quick loom shot so you can see the dial better. No shortage of super luminova, easy to read in the dark. And the watch has white gold hands, our indices, and then the little Maltese cross that is also white gold. We have polished chapterings for the sub-registers, and unlike the second generation chrono, which had symmetrical registers, we have a big eye style minutes register, so it's easier to read that information. It's more readily available. We have a rehot or a sloped chaptering that gives you the ability to read seconds as well as fractions of seconds and minutes, and then inboard a gloss lacquer base with matte blue finish for each of the sub-registers, and the late double-digit date, the grande dot, which was featured on the first and second generation chronos, went away with the third generation. A lot of folks miss it. On the reverse of the case, you can see several standout features. One, several different finishes. You can see chiseling. You could see polish. You could see circular satination. And then you could see that this, this center ring around the vessel actually has a lapping machine style radial satin grain. So four different finishes. And then we have the image of the Italian naval training ship Amerigo Vespucci. That is the image basis for that ship used on the reverse side. We have have a solid case back because there is a soft iron cage internally which boosts anti-magnetism to 25,000 ampere per meter. Remember, an ISO 764 anti-magnetic watch has to be 4,800 amperes per meter. This is 25,000. The movement is Frederic Piguet 1185. It is a thin, fine, high horology, five position adjusted, and hand finished automatic integrated chronograph caliber. Unidirectional winding, 40 hour power reserve, six beats per second, 37 joules. It features a quick set for the date, though not hacking seconds, but it does have a modern tandem on the chronograph side of a column wheel 
for crisp, sharp action of the chronograph, and a vertical clutch so there's no jump or stagger to the seconds hand. And you can see it starts without any kind of jump. You can leave it running because of the vertical clutch. There is no additional wear and tear on the movement. Frédéric Piguet is the manufacturer associated with Blancpain, and this is effectively a Blancpain movement made, regulated, and finished for Vacheron, so a high horology movement inside a high horology watch. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.